Now, for the first time in a while, I'm wishing those of you who celebrate a happy Alec Manoa Day. Toronto Blue Jays, how sweep it is. How cool was that getting that doubleheader sweep? It, it, it was dicey, I know, but getting that doubleheader sweep yesterday, which means how sweep it is because that means the Toronto Blue Jays sweep the series from the Chicago White Sox, which means how sweep it is as the Toronto Blue Jays sweep the season series from the Chicago White Sox. I'm thrilled about that as I'm big on you need to take care of business against the teams that you're supposed to take care of business against. Doesn't that lead us to today's Locked On Blue Jay podcast as the turn the page now to Detroit as the Blue Jays head into Motown for a, a three-game series over the weekend against the lowly Detroit Tigers. Again, this is a series. It's it's taking us into the All-Star break, and it's right under the category that we just saw in the Chicago White Sox series. Again, have to take care of business against the teams that you're supposed to take care of business against. You are Locked On Blue Jays, your daily Toronto Blue Jays podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, friends. Craig Ballard, Locked On Blue Jays. Certainly want to thank you for spending part of your time talking Toronto Blue Jay baseball with me. Want to remind you that the Locked On Blue Jay podcast is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And of course, the, today's Blue Jay game, like yesterday, like all the games in 2023, available on Sirius XM. If you're taking in today's episode on the Locked On Blue Jay podcast YouTube page, hello to you and thank you for that. Please hit that like, leave that comment, hit that subscribe if you haven't already. If you're one of the everydayers making the Locked On Blue Jay podcast your first podcast listen every day, want to thank you as well, helping the podcast grow. So appreciative. I, I, I'm so appreciative. I, I thank you for that. Please do hit that five star rating. TGIF, right? And, and the Jays need to start getting back. Remember, remember, we looked at the Jays were what, they won the I think they were six and zero. They won the first six Friday games. Well, they've lost like three of their last four. So let's get back to that winning feeling as we head into a weekend, right? Playing the I would consider very lowly Detroit Tigers. I'm absolutely predicting it's a two out of three weekend for the Toronto Blue Jays just by showing up for these games on time. Uh, I'll, I'll look for a sweep, but you know I always. I'm always wary of, of hoping for the sweep. I'm certainly looking for two out of three this weekend. In today's episode, we're going to get set for that series. We're going to look at the pitching matchups. In the second segment, we're really going to deep dive why I'm totally okay with Alec Manoa being back on the big league level. We'll get to that. But first, let's set the table for this weekend series. So with the Toronto Blue Jays playing the Chicago White Sox this week, our, our trivia questions had to do, you know, had that twist, right? That Blue Jays and White Sox twist. First question we asked, of course, had to do with the First game in Toronto Blue Jay franchise history. That was against the Chicago White Sox. That was back on April 7th, 1977. Uh, there was snow. It was zero degrees. <laughs> I mean, you, you talk about your typical Canadian team making their debut, right? Wow, especially outdoors, right? I mean, my goodness. That was a 9-5 victory for the Toronto Blue Jays. And we asked who hit the first franchise home run that day, who got the first franchise win, who got the first franchise save. They all happened in that first game. Well, the first franchise home run, that was Doug Alt. He would actually hit two in that first game. Really, really sent the, the home crowd home happy with, with, with some thrills there. The first franchise win, two and two-thirds uh, innings of relief work from Jerry Johnson. It was a Bill Singer was the, was the uh, starter for the Blue Jays that day. He didn't even last through the fifth. Jerry Johnson came in, did a good job, ends up getting the win in relief. And the first franchise save, well, that was Pete Vukovic. Now, Pete Vukovic was usually a starter. In fact, he won the 1982 Cy Young. So five years later, he would win the American League Cy Young over somehow over Jim Palmer and Blue Jay Dave Steeb. I mean, Dave Steeb's season to Pete Vukovic in 82 was completely superior. No idea. Even Dan Quisenberry, who ever dares well know, we've talked about Quisenberry a few times, that, that incredible sidearm closer that the Kansas City Royals had in the 80s against the Blue Jays. I mean, even he had a superior, superior season to that of Pete Vukovic. No idea how Vukovic won the 1982 sign. I think he had, if I remember correctly, he had 105 strikeouts that season and 102 walks. Like, he was good, but Cy Young good? I mean no 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 anyway the next trivia question we had what blue jay closer no sorry i should, I should set this up here of course uh, white Sox, blue jays right well that was the 1993 american league championship series the blue jays would win that series four games to two to get back to the world series and of course beat philly four games to two touch them all joe you'll never hit a bigger home run in your life we know the deal right we know the deal but in that uh, 93 alcs against the white Sox, we asked the question of what blue jay closer did have some rough moments in that series, but ultimately did get two saves, including a five-out save to close out that series in game six. That was Dwayne Ward. That was Dwayne Ward. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. In that ALCS, four games to two, that that, that Chicago team, that was Frank Thomas, that was Jack McDowell, uh, that was Bo Jackson. 
Uh, in that six game series, the Blue Jays, believe it or not, they won four games to two. And in those, those six games, they only hit two home runs, if you can believe that. Yes. Who hit those two home runs was, was one of the questions we asked. Did you get that? Did you get either one? Was Paul Molitor and Devon White. Shout out to Molitor and Devon White. Uh, four games to two. Now, a pair of Blue Jays starters went 2-0 and in that series. Who were those Blue Jays starters? Well, Juan Guzman won game one. Dave Stewart won game two. Juan Guzman won game five. Dave Stewart won game six. So, Goose and Stu. We talked about the fact that uh, Bo had uh, Bo Jackson had 10 at-bats versus the Blue Jays in the 1993 ALCS. How many hits did he have? How many hits did Bo have out of those 10 at-bats against the Blue Jays? As many as you or I had, zero, not a one. Blue Jays dominated Bo Jackson. No team did better against Bo Jackson, the mighty, mighty Bo Jackson in his career, than the Toronto Blue Jays. In fact, that was the next question is, Bo played 14 games against the Blue Jays at Exhibition Stadium, 13 games against the Blue Jays at Skydome, at then Skydome, right? So in the 27 road games, 27 games that Bo played against the Jays in Canada, how many home runs did the slugger hit? Just three. Just three, like I said, the Blue Jays did better against Bo Jackson than any other team in baseball. And then finally, we asked Charlie Montoyo. He's the bench coach now with the Chicago White Sox. He managed 472 games for the Toronto Blue Jays. Did the Blue Jays finish A, 10 games over, uh, sorry, 10 games under 500, so 231 and 241? Did they finish even 500 at 236 and 236? Or did they finish under Montoyo 10 games over 500 at 241 wins, 231 losses? Do you, did you know this one? Even 500 team, 236 wins, 236 losses under Charlie Montoyo. Awesome. Thanks for playing along there. We do the trivia every week. Hope you have some fun with that. Always try to come up with some with some interesting, fun questions for us. Now let's dive into this weekend series. Blue Jays at Detroit. The the Detroit Tigers, I mean, way below 500. Uh, the the last you know little over a month, they're 12 wins and 23 losses. So last 35 games, they have 12 wins. In their last 18 home games, they uh, sorry, uh, last uh, yeah, last 18 home games, they have five wins. They're on a five and 13 plummet at home. All that said, as bad as all that is, they're six games behind the first place Minnesota Twins in the loss column. Like, are, are you absolutely kidding me? This American League Central, are you absolutely kidding me with this division? My gosh. Uh, 2018, that was the last time the Blue Jays lost a series in Detroit. They're, they're on a good run there. At 2018, also the last time that the Blue Jays lost a season series to the to the Detroit Tigers overall. The Jays have won nine of the last 12 meetings between these two teams. Now, the most recent game was a Tigers win. You might remember that was the 3-1 uh, win at Rogers Center. Remember, the, the Tigers played the Blue Jays. The Jays took two out of three in April. Uh, that was the – and they avoided that sweep with that 3-1 game back in April. That, that was Chris Bassett. You might remember that was his home debut, and he pitched an absolute gem. But, of course, I mean, Blue Jays scored one run, right? You're not going <laughs> to win a whole lot of games that way. Uh, you remember game one of that series, or, or let's let's take our mind's eye back and, and remember what happened with these two teams back in April there in, in, in that three-game series. Uh, game one, Tigers quick off of Alec Manoa. We're going to get into Alec, and we're going to get into Alec in a moment here. Off of Alec Manoa, quick three nothing lead for the Tigers in the top of the second inning, but then back to back Kevin Kiermaier and Springer Dingers give the Blue Jays a four three lead in the fifth, and that four three lead became nine three with a five run explosion in the in the bottom of the eighth inning. Blue Jays would go on to win game one of that series nine to three. Game two of that series, Blue Jays took advantage of some sloppy Tigers play in the bottom of the ninth to score a pair of runs to tie the game, and then George Springer with a walk off hit in the bottom of the tenth. I mean, this Tiger team, very sloppy, very sloppy. They, they they very rarely put together a full nine-inning effort, a full nine-inning game of execution. In that game, too, they just hand it to the Blue Jays. Matt Chapman, overall, uh, in that series, was four for eight with a walk and just one strikeout. Now, that was April, right? So we know who Matt Chapman was in April. And so that's the glass half full, as he did do well against the Tigers. Glass half empty. That was, you know, it seems like a long time ago, Matt Chapman, at this point. And I have to mention that, uh, Comerica, this is one of the worst ballparks that Matt Chapman has hit at in his career. 42 at-bats at Comerica Park in Detroit here, just eight hits. It's a 178 batting average. So I'm not sure that this ballpark really has the cure for what ails Matt Chapman. But, I mean, we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. George Springer now. Other side of the coin. In fact, the, the, the entire top of this batting lineup, other side of the coin. The, the, George Springer, Bo Bichette, and Vladimir Guerrero Jr. are looking forward to this road trip, are looking forward to the series in Detroit. They have mashed at Comerica Park. 
George Springer has 26 hits in his career at Comerica. His slash line is he's hitting 351, 422 on base, 962 OPS. I mean, are these good numbers? Holy moly, he is absolutely dominating in this ballpark. Vladimir Guerrero Jr., 15 for 39. That's a 385 average. He's got a pair of home runs in this ballpark, including last season versus Tarek Skubal, who will start on Sunday for the Tigers. And Bo, Bo, 11 for 27. That's a 407 batting average. Is that good? He also has a pair of home runs at Comerica. Witt, got a shout out Whit Merrifield here. Whit Merrifield, of course, longtime Kansas City Royal with the unbalanced schedule. He's played in the American League Central for years. He's played at Comerica many, 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 many times. It's his best road ballpark to hit in in all of baseball. Let's go. 52 games. Yeah, Witt's played there a lot. 52 games, and Witt is hitting 333 with a 956 OPS in this ballpark. Whit Merrifield has nine home runs in his career at Comerica. Nine home runs. He has 81 for his career, nine in this ballpark. Any other ballpark in the league, any other ballpark, Whit Merrifield gets a home run every 51 at bats. At Comerica, a home run every 24 at bats. So he's more than he's hitting more than twice as many home runs as he usually does in this ballpark. So let's watch Whit closely. Let's get excited about him over this weekend. Uh, for Dalton Varsho, this will be his Comerica debut. So we keep looking for ballparks and things to help spark Dalton Varsho to get him going, right? Well, let, let, let's see what happens this weekend. This Tigers offense, boy, I'm just not concerned about this Tigers offense at all. Bottom four in all offensive categories, except home runs where they're bottom six. I mean, it's just, just not a lot here. The only good hitter they have is Riley Green. Now, he's been out since May with a stretch fracture in his left fibula. He started rehab. He hopes to be to be back soon, but he won't be back for this Blue Jays series. Uh, Nick Maton. Nick Maton had a really good series versus the Blue Jays back in April, which included two home runs, but he's since been sent to the minors. Detroit's leading hitter right now is Zach McKinstry. Zach McKinstry is hitting 250. Their leading hitter is hitting 250. Detroit only has two batters on the entire roster that have double digits in home runs. That's catcher Jake Rogers at 11 and Spencer Torkelson at 12. I mean, this is a light hitting team. Former Blue Jay pitcher Matt Boyd, remember he was part of that David Price trade. He leads the Tigers with five wins. That He was hurt his last time out. He might, he might actually uh, have drawn the assignment to, uh, tonight, but no, he, he's out injured right now. Mike, just not, not a lot to be concerned about here if, if we're being totally honest. With the, with the Detroit Tigers. Coming up on the Lockdown Blue Jay podcast, going to deep dive the big Puma. Alec Manoa is back. I appear to be in the minority here because I actually don't mind the move at all. We'll, we'll get into that. I want to remind you, of course, that tonight's game available to take in on Sirius XM. And want to just mention quickly, of course, that the Locked On Blue Jay podcast is part of the Locked On Podcast Network. That's your team every day. So stick around after Locked On Blue Jays and check out Sully hosting Locked On MLB. There's also a Locked On Fantasy Baseball as well. Locked On Podcast Network has 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 you has your sports fixed does that even make sense yeah has your sports fixed <laughs> your team every day right that's the motto that's the slogan now i wanted to mention that buying tickets to your favorite event it shouldn't be stressful game time game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all sports music comedy theater you name it near you killer deals on last minute tickets and the best price guarantee you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you're about to have Every day, as well, know, I've talked many times, you know, I don't like going to the Blue Jay games. Well, I've been to several this season, wanted to see the renovations. And really, on top of that, using the Game Time app has just been so, I was going to say fun. I mean, dare I even say fun? It's been enjoyable, that's for sure, because it, it is so stress-free. You know, if, if, if the tickets are going to be that stress-free, then, okay, I don't mind going to the games. It's too, cl you, you get a seat, you, you get an image of your seat view, so I know what to expect when I get there. It's two clicks, and, and I'm, it's two clicks and the tickets come right to my phone. Yes, it, it really is that easy. So for me, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just no good at things like this. So the ease of use for, for the game time app is, is really important to me. It's why I keep using it. So forget the planning, you know, for months in advance. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the day of event of the event. And what I really appreciate about game time is that the game time guarantee is that you're always going to get the best price because if you find tickets in the same section and row for less, then game time is going to credit you 110% of the difference. And it's the fastest growing ticketing app in the country, right? For a reason. Tickets are sent directly to your phone. You never have to dig through your email. Love that as well. Love that. Snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. And again, create an account and redeem the code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Alec Manoa is back in the house for the Toronto Blue Jays. I know, I, I'm very much seem to be in the minority here. It seems like the majority are very. Is the word upset the way to, to, the word to use here? And if it's not upset, at the very least concerned that that this was not the right move, bringing him back up. 
is this is this going to damage him you know even more is he even ready that's the big thing i guess right is he even ready to be back on the big league stage and, and i'll tell you why i don't mind the move um at all let's start with the fact that I mean, i'm willing to give the benefit of the doubt that there is some method to the madness here for the blue jays you know this is an organization that's always extremely tight-lipped nothing ever gets out so i'm wondering but because we didn't hear anything like this right but did they have specific things they were looking for even a specific thing, singular, that if if Alec can get X, whatever X is right, it's going to be a domino. Things are going to start to improve. It's going to be the, we're, we're going to get back to the Alec Manoa, Alec Manoa, right? And again, what would that thing be? We don't know because the Blue Jays are so tight-lipped, but it does stand to reason that something like that here could be in play or is in play. Now, you've got Bowden Francis out here, not exactly embarrassing himself, right? Now, he'll surely be ready to step in. You know, all five of his appearances have been in relief, and it usually comes in around the fourth inning. So even if Alec Manoa can give him, you know, just 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 three innings tonight and, and then turn it over to Bowden Francis, this seems like a good recipe to me here. And however this start goes, with the all-star break looming, I mean, Manoa and Francis, they'll get a ton of rest after tonight anyway. So either one will be available for as many innings as they're effective tonight, plus... Of course, now you've got Trevor Richards back in the bullpen, so you've got Trevor Richards in your back pocket there as well, and we're going to get to more on Trevor Richards when it comes to this move in a moment here, part of why, why I don't mind this move. Now, when Manoa went to Florida, the Blue Jays had lost nine of his last ten starts. Then Trevor Richards, again, back in the bullpen now, but he made three starts as the opener. He pitched well in those three games, right? Yes, but, but the Blue Jays still lost two of those three games. So in the last 13 turns in this Alec Manoa spot in the rotation, the Blue Jays have won twice. 2-11, and 11. so I'm going to ask, could it really get worse? I mean, let's, if you think the big fella has, is back or on the road to being back, why not bring him back to the big little here? Could it get worse? You've won two of the last 13 rotation spots here. You've got Bowden, again, Bowden ready to relieve, so I'm, I'm okay with that, especially if that's something or some things that the Blue Jays were looking for and, and that they did see in Manoa recently. Now, hopefully, at some point, you know, you're going to get Zach Pop back, hopefully sooner rather than later. Hopefully, Chad Green is on his way back. Yumi Garcia is seemingly losing favor, but the bringing back Alec Manoa, the goodness that that allows the Blue Jays to, to permanently put Trevor Richards, likely anyway, put Trevor Richards back into the bullpen permanently, that's going to really strengthen this bullpen. You look at, I mean, Nate Pearson. Nate Pearson had 17 career appearances coming into this season. He's got 23 already this season. Eric Swanson. His career high for appearances is 57. He's already at 41. Jordan Romano, already at 37. He's on pace for appearances. He's on pace for a career high in appearances. And, and part of my point here is how many of those Jordan Romano appearances were non-save situations? Because that's what had to be done at the back of the bullpen. That's what was available for the Blue Jays at the back of the bullpen. Well, how about if the back of that bullpen all of a sudden now has one likely two innings available from a guy like Trevor Richards. I, I think this is going to be very, very helpful. At, at least on paper, I can see the, the scenario where this has a chance to be very, very helpful. Now, the my best case scenario for Alec Manoa is that we see at least a couple of his pitchers, pitches that look more like Alec Manoa, Alec Manoa, right? The big Puma, Alec Manoa. Also want to see him pounding the strike zone. The walks were just absurd so, or have been just absurd so far in 2023. You look at, I mean, even even in this matchup, uh, Alec coming into the season had faced the Tigers twice before in his career. He'd only walked one of them ever, one one walk ever against the Tigers. Well, he pitched against the Tigers, didn't even make it through the fifth inning back in that series in April, and walked five. I mean, his control has just been completely unacceptable. Hopefully, that's something that we're going to see back on track tonight. Now, the last time we saw Manoa, none of his pitches were, were recognizable, right? So I'd simply love to see some of his repertoire back to to how we know it, to how we love it. Uh, opposing Alec Manoa, going to be fellow righty Alex Fajardo. He's had five starts on the season, just one and three, ERA at five and a half. Now his fastball, I feel like his fastball has been decent. It, it, it's it's probably been good. It's the pitch you want to look for tonight because the the slider is has been very good for Fajardo. The slider is what he goes to for those swings and misses. Now let's get into this weekend's games. The first, of course, Saturday, 1 10 p.m. Eastern first pitch and catch that game on Sirius XM. It'll be the second start of the season for Kevin Gosman versus the Detroit Tigers. The first one went really well. Blue Jays won that game 4-3 in extra innings, and Gosman was really good. Uh, 11 strikeouts over his eight innings of work. <laughs> Gosman being, I mean, yet another, right? Great start for Kevin Gosman. Now, a lot of glass half full, a lot of cause for optimism in this game for Gosman and the Toronto Blue Jays. First of all, I want to mention that Kevin Gosman is pitching this game on an extra day's rest. Again, 
part of why why I see the the reasoning for bringing up Alec Manoa. You, you buy some extra day rest for some of your guys. Kevin Gosman, this will be his ninth start with extra rest. In the previous eight, he's totaled 53 and two-thirds innings pitched and allowed just six runs. That's a 1.01 earned run average in his previous eight starts where he's had extra rest. That's going to work. This is his 11th day game of the season. In the previous 10, 1.88 ERA. He's given up nine home runs this season. Only one has come from a day game. I mean, (laughs) Kevin Gosman, all kinds of cause for optimism in the Saturday afternoon game. Now, truth be told, over the course of his entire career, he's not pitched well at Comerica. But, again, back to the glass half full, since developing that splitter, different story. And he he was good. His last time at Comerica, he was good as well with this new, you know, incredible splitter, right? Blue Jays 5-4 and in Gosman road starts. That includes having won his last three road starts. Now, when it comes to the offense in Gosman, I mean, you already see this coming. <laughs> Blue Jays on the road, averaging just a titch, like barely over three runs per game in Kevin Gosman starts. We knew they're the same at home like every single time, right? The Blue Jays, three runs for Kevin Gosman. My goodness. Now, on this last homestand that the Blue Jays just had, they actually lost both of Gosman's starts, but they totaled four runs in those two games. Gosman pitched well. They totaled four runs. The offense just does not come through often enough uh, for for Kevin Gosman. Now, current Detroit Tigers, just 19 for 84. That's a 226 batting average versus Gosman. And the only Tiger that'll play tonight that did okay versus him in that previous start versus the Tigers back in April, that was Kerry Carpenter. Carpenter was one for three in that game, so he went strikeout, strikeout, but the one hit came then in in his last at-bat against Gosman, which was in the top of the seventh inning of a 1-1 tie. Seventh inning, Blue Jays have had one run. Forgot a typical, right? Typical. You probably saw that coming already. But then Carpenter would hit that uh, a two run home run. If you remember that, that would make a three to one Tigers. And again, the Blue Jays would win that game four three. The Tigers got very sloppy from there on out and hand the Blue Jays that game. Thank you. We'll take it. The Tigers swung at 24 of Gosman's splitters in that game and swung and missed, came up wanting, came up empty 14 times. I mean, we know Gosman's dominant with, with a splitter against Detroit this season. And I th- I'm saying against Detroit on Saturday, not going to be any different. Now, former first-rounder and fellow right-handed pitcher Matt Manning makes his second start since his return from a broken foot. Now, you may remember Matt Manning. He started for the Tigers in in the Blue Jays' home opener this season, gave up four runs on six hits. Chapman, Kiermaier, and Springer all took him deep. And you might recall with two outs in the bottom of the sixth inning, uh, Alejandro Kirk hit a line drive back up the middle there off of Manning's foot, hit Manning's foot, broke his bone, broke a bone in his foot. He still covered first base and, and made the out, if you remember that, but shortly thereafter would find himself on the 60-day DL with that broken foot. Made his return towards the end of his, uh, end of June. He's had two starts since his return. Sorry, yeah, that's right. He's had two starts. This will be his third start since his return. His two starts were at Texas and at Colorado. Mixed results. I mean, you might imagine mixed results coming back from that sort of recovery, right? But worth noting when I say at Texas and when I say at Colorado, those are two road starts. And traditionally, over the course of his, albeit brief, but still it's his third year in the majors, and he has always pitched much much better at Comerica than on the road. So could be an interesting storyline. But again, when, when you look at this pitching matchup, I mean, big time advantage for the Toronto Blue Jays on Saturday. And then on Sunday, 1.40 p.m. Eastern, first pitch, available on Sirius XM, Chris Bassett on the mound for the Toronto Blue Jays. Now, Chris Bassett, we saw him. He was he was slumping in June, right? He had, what, about three starts in a row there where, oh, my goodness, Chris, what is going on here? But back to being the hound on the mound his last two times out. His last two times out, his only blemish over those 12 innings a total was that uh, was that three-run home run to Luis Robert Jr. in that White Sox game. That was the game where Slim Daddy Vladi hit the, the game-winning two-run home run anyway, so we had some heroics anyway. And Luis Robert Jr. is hitting home runs off everyone, so not exactly embarrassing for, <laughs> to, to give up a home run to him. And he, he, Just Chris Bassett, though, has he been good these last couple starts? As I say, he's been back to being the hound on the mound, and he'll be glad to be back on this particular mound at Comerica Park He's always pitched well there in his career, and he hasn't had a chance to pitch there in a few years. Now, everydayers will know that, I mean, when it comes to Chris Bassett, we're always paying attention to his matchup versus lefties. This season, he's dominated righties. When he's gotten in trouble, when he's got hit around, it's been the lefties. Well, this Detroit lineup, it has the cure for what ails you if you're struggling against lefties or righties. I just, if these could be famous last words, right? I mean, I'm absolutely predicting the Blue Jays take two out of three just in the series, just by showing up on time, just by showing up on time for the games. This is two out of three for the Toronto Blue Jays. Offense gets three runs for, for nothing. Nothing matters here, right? The Blue Jays are taking two out of three. I'm, of course, hoping for the sweep 
but I always say it's, you know, it's, it's, it's really hoping for too much or, you know, it's a little lofty to have your goal when you want to, when you're saying you need to sweep another major league team, it is still major league players. It is still nine innings, 27 outs. I mean, it's baseball, right? All kinds of wonky things can happen. So I'll be happy with the two out of three here. Uh, I'm predicting the two out of three here and, and bottom line on this Sunday game in this finale, this Detroit lineup doesn't offer anything that should get in the way of giving Chris Bassett any concerns for the third start in a row. We should absolutely see the hound on the mound. That is a wrap for this week's versions of the Locked On Blue Jay podcast. Again, thank you for choosing to spend parts of your days this week talking Toronto Blue Jay baseball with me. Thank you for helping the Locked On Blue Jay podcast grow. If you are a fan of baseball in general, not just a Blue Jay fan, but you know baseball in general, then keep it locked on the Locked On Podcast Network and check out Sully hosting the Locked On MLB. Reminder, of course, tonight's games, all the games this weekend available for you on SiriusXM. All we, what do we always say on Friday? How do we always finish the shows on Friday? Have a great weekend, and I hope your weekend is full of Toronto Blue Jay victories.